If you're a homeowner and you want to downsize, relocate, upsize, invest in real estate, or you simply don't like where you live right now and you want to buy something that fits your vibe a little bit better, well, you need to watch this video. The most common question I get from sellers right now is, if I sell, I'll be in the same position as the people that are so desperate to buy my house. And if I don't find something soon while I sell, I'm going to end up homeless, right? Wrong. As a homeowner in 2022, you're in position A to succeed in this market. Your home's value has appreciated about 40% if you're in the Midwest since 2019. You're in the best seller's market in recent history and you are locked into a fixed monthly payment with no pressure to find somewhere to live tomorrow. Like your lease isn't gonna expire in two weeks is kind of your situation. Um, and you're not gonna end up homeless if you don't find somewhere to live in the next two weeks. You know, you're locked in. The main barrier really to you getting the dream home is being able to make the most competitive offer on a home. This means making a non-contingent offer or a no sales contingency. So you can't put on an offer right now on a good property, I have to sell my house in order for this loan to go through. You're not gonna get the house 99% of the time. If it's, a, if it's a hot listing, if it's a really quality house, you're gonna have a bunch of other people that want it just like you do, and they're not gonna be putting that sales contingency on there, and they're the ones that are gonna get that house, not you. So you have to go in non-contingent. So in this video, I'm actually gonna outline three ways that you can succeed in buying your dream home as a current homeowner. Before we get started, I wanna address the sound quality of this video is actually gonna change back and forth as I go from what I'm recording on now, which is my camera. I'm gonna be actually hopping on my laptop and sharing the screen and just recording straight off the microphone on the laptop. So the sound quality is gonna sound different at different points in the video. I know you are expecting utmost quality of production value here in these videos. Um, I know I'm just like Steven Spielberg, I'm just like James Cameron with the quality of my production. Um, but you know, this one, it's just not gonna be the, the highest quality. No, really, I don't think that <laughs> we're gonna be filming at IMAX anytime soon. Unless, hey, unless you wanna donate, unless we wanna raise some money for the John Sintich Real Estate YouTube channel, if you guys wanna invest, we can up the production level you know, dramatically here. We can do 3D, like I said, IMAX. We can do the whole shebang, but otherwise I think we'll just stick with the, the, the iPhone and the, uh, the laptop for now. <laughs> This is your first time on the channel. My name is John Sintich. I'm your guide to real estate in the south suburbs of Chicago and the Chicagoland area. My goal is to empower and educate people in order to help them make confident and powerful home selling decisions and home buying decisions. If you find the content of this video helpful and useful to you, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. All right, guys, let's get rolling. Okay, so the first strategy, if you are a current homeowner and you are looking to buy another house and sell your current house without putting a contingent on sale in your offer for when you go to buy another house. The first strategy I'm gonna outline here is called a post-closing possession, or you can also call it a sale leaseback. So this is when you sell your home to a buyer and after the home closes, meaning the title, so the ownership of the home transfers from you to the buyer, they are now the homeowner. In your contract, you can outline what's called a post-closing possession. So after you close, you get to stay in the house for a period of time that you decide between your lawyer and the buyer's lawyer. And it typically is no longer than 60 days. So you decide before the contract is executed how long you want it to be. So after the sale is closed, you get all your money and you are no longer the owner of the property, but you can live there and pay rent to the current new rather owner and this is helpful because you have all the money now and you can use all that money for increased buying power for when you go and purchase your house that you actually want to buy and you don't have to put a sales contingency because you already sold your house you already have all your money and you're not you know going to be homeless you have the house for a predetermined amount of time and then you can go be a very aggressive buyer and make the most confident and powerful and high most competitive offer when you're going to buy a house. The nice part about this strategy is you don't need to go get another loan while you're currently paying a mortgage to go buy a house because you already have all the money. You know, the con of this is now you're, let's say it's a 60 day post-closing possession, you have 60 days to find that house. Now, the thing that helps a lot with this strategy is 
knowing exactly what you want and where you want to move before you actually sell your house so that you're kind of ready to rock. You're ready to, to go. Not only knowing where you want to go and what kind of house you want, you have your strategy dialed in with your realtor who's going to help you buy the house. So you set that strategy up before you even sell your house so you are ready to go. You're ready to implement that strategy. That's how you win offers. You set a competitive strategy with a realtor that knows the business and knows how to win and succeed and actually get their buyers under contract, which is kind of rare these days. You got to find that realtor that's going to show proof of success in the past with other buyers, have them create that strategy with you, and then be ready to execute it aggressively when you do sell that house and you are ready to purchase the next house. That's the best way to kind of implement this strategy. Okay, now we're on the laptop. Video quality is probably diminished. Audio quality, hopefully it sounds okay. Again, Steven Spielberg, I am not. But we're here to learn about buying a house without a sales contingency. Not about video editing, not about video production. So please bypass my terrible quality video and just listen to the content. So strategy number two, we're going to be talking about buying um, before you sell. Buy before you sell. So this requires a lot more finesse. It requires you to have a much stronger financial position, as you should if you're a current homeowner and you're financially responsible um, and you're saving money, um, you know, periodically over time, and you have good, you know, stable W two, good income. This is how you buy before you sell. So, one strategy I'm going to talk about is getting pre-approved without, you know, selling your house getting pre-approved for your mortgage. Hopefully you've been in your house. You know, this is actually for people that might have been, might be in their house for longer than five years. You know, they've built some equity. Maybe they've gotten a promotion at work. You know, your income maybe has gone up significantly since you did buy that first home. Maybe it's your starter house and you had much less income at the time where you purchased that property. Maybe you got married. Maybe you and your spouse are now making quite a bit more together and you can afford a lot more. So that would require, you know, getting pre-approved for the mortgage and then going out and buying a home before you sell your house. Now again, this used to be very risky because you'd run the risk of buying a home and then not being able to sell your house, and then you have two mortgages and you can't sell your other house, then you're in trouble. This market here in 2022, at the time of this video being recorded, is roughly the strongest seller's market we've seen in recent history. As long as your house is in good shape and you price it correctly, you price it very competitively, you're not really risking your house not selling um, after you buy a home. So that, that con is slightly diminished here in this case. It is a con. Um, it is a risk, but the risk of not selling your home is dramatically decreased at this point and where we are at in the current state of the market. So back to, you know, getting pre-approved for a mortgage and then you go and you, you succeed, you execute your buying plan perfectly. You get under contract and you close on the whole, the house. Congratulations. I'm actually going to share my screen here and show you what you can do after you purchase the home. So let's say the current home you live in, you bought it for maybe you bought it for 180,000, nice little starter house. And now it's worth 250 because the market has appreciated so dramatically over the last two years. So you want to go and buy a house that's worth $450,000. You got pre-approved, uh, but you can only put 5% down because you, you know, you, you need to have your emergency fund. You can't just deplete your savings account for a 20% down payment on a $450,000 house because you still have this house that you're, you know, your house that's worth 250,000 that you own. So you take a 5% down payment. Now, a lot of people don't want to just put 5% down. You know, you want to put 20% down. So you have some equity. You take your 5% down loan, you buy your $450,000 house and you do what's called a mortgage recast. So a mortgage recast is different than a refinance because it's the same loan. You're just putting more equity into the house after you sell your starter house. So let me show you. We'll put me down here in the corner. We'll talk about a mortgage recast, okay? So when you recast your mortgage, you pay a lump sum toward the principal you owe on your home loan. So let's say your principal is obviously going to be a lot larger if you're only putting 5% down on the new property. But you sell your home and that's where you get your lump sum. So let's say you sell your home for 250,000 and you net, I don't know, let's say you net 100 grand. You had some equity built up after your, you know, cost of sales and all of that and your 
uh, mortgage payoff. Let's say you take a hundred thousand away from that. Great. There's there's a nice chunk of change that you can put into your mortgage recast. Okay. So you put that lump sum towards the principal you owe on your new home loan. Then your mortgage lender calculates the new monthly payment based on the reduced balance. Okay. It does come with an out-of-pocket cost to recast your mortgage, like refinancing, it's typically in the form of an administrative fee, but this article is saying that it typically is only a few hundred dollars. Again, I have lenders that specialize in this, and they can give you a lot more specific information about mortgage recasting and exactly how much it costs. Um, so if you would like to get in touch with one of those lenders, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is below in the description. I'd be more than happy to put you in contact with them. And so here's an example. Let's say you bought a home. You currently owe $250,000 with a monthly principal and interest of $1,600. The interest rate for the 30-year conventional is 5% in this example. Let's say you inherit $100,000 from Aunt Betty or you inherit $100,000 from the equity you had in your first home that you just sold. And you decide to put 50 of it towards the mortgage recast. You still have a 30-year mortgage with a 5-year, excuse me, a 30-year loan with a 5% interest rate. And the recast will drop your monthly payment from $1,600 to $1,179 in this case. So you're saving $421 a month. That's a significant amount of money. And it's saving you a lot of, you know, a lot of money over the life of the loan. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases. So this mortgage recast is a super effective way to buy before you sell. Another way to buy before you sell is using something that's called a bridge loan. A bridge loan is right here, a short-term loan, and it's used to bridge that gap between buying that new house and selling your current house. So in this article, it says sometimes you wanna buy before you sell. Well, that's the main point of this video. We have to buy before we sell in this example because we cannot put a sales contingency on most of the homes that you wanna buy right now. So let's talk about how a bridge loan works. Bridge loan will help provide funds for your new home purchase if you don't have it readily available. The most common way to use a bridge loan is for closing costs. So like bringing that cash, that's the main barrier, right? Bringing that cash after you know you got pre-approved for your mortgage and bringing that cash to close the deal. So you can apply for this loan with a lender. Again, I work with a bunch of lenders that have this kind of loan product and they're much more qualified on speaking about this than I am. But the point is I work with a lot of these lenders and they're very good at what they do. And I would be more than happy to connect you with a lender to help talk you through this bridge loan and how it would work for you and help you succeed in buying that dream house without having to sell that, that starter house or the house you're currently living in first. The third and the last strategy that I'm gonna outline here today are the structured buy before you sell programs that these companies, their specialty is buy before you sell. And they help you make essentially cash offers before you sell your house and you make that cash offer on the new house. So I'm actually going to show you a website. There's two main ones that I know very well. One is called Homeward and one is called Ribbon. And these companies basically allow you to go in as a non-contingent buyer. It's a very good product. So this is Homeward. I'm, I'm not going to pull up Ribbon. I'm just going to keep it simple and not confuse everybody and just show you um, the Homeward's website. So basically, this is how it works. They have a nice little <clears throat> content wrapped up beautifully here in a nice little visually appealing website. So number one, you get approved. You sit down with them and they approve you for a specific amount so that you can start shopping and be ready to make an offer as soon as you, know, you find that home. So then they help you make this cash offer, essentially. So they work with you know, the real estate agent on making a cash offer on the new house. Again, you still have to make a strong offer with cash. You can't just get a discount because it's a cash offer. These companies, they know that. They're very well versed on the state of the real estate market and they understand that buying with cash in 2022 doesn't get you a discount like it used to. People still want the highest dollar for their home in most, in most uh, case scenarios. Number three, you get that offer accepted. And then we work with I work as the agent, I work with this company to help finalize the purchase. Um, you do have to pay your earnest money. So it's not you know completely free. You have to have the earnest money deposit, which I discuss about earnest money in a lot of my other videos. Um, I can refer you to them as well. 
um, scheduling your inspection and signing the mortgage disclosure documents. Then you close, you move into the new house. Then you buy your home. Okay, so let me just take, take a step. You sell your current home. Then you take the money from that sale and you buy back your new home from Homeward. Then you get your mortgage and you close on the home. You buy it essentially from Homeward. So they essentially buy it for you and then you buy it from them with the mortgage that you get after you sell your current home and you have a lot more equity and you can put more down. So that's how this works. This allows you to move forward if you're motivated enough to use this program to go and find that dream house because you have nice equity built up in the primary residence that you have now, you can use this program to be more competitive and not lose on all these offers because you're checking contingent on sale, contingent on sale, contingent on sale. Well, nobody really wants to take those offers right now and they don't have to because they're getting a ton of other offers that don't have that sales contingency. Okay guys, those are my three strategies that I wanted to outline for you today as a current homeowner looking to purchase that dream house and you're just not quite sure how to navigate the market. I hope you found this content informative and helpful. I hope this video resonated with you. If it did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you need to get a hold of me, if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, you can reach out to me anytime. My contact information is below in the description. I am a licensed realtor in the state of Illinois. I can help you with your buying and selling needs. I'm just one phone call away, guys. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.